Hi everyone, my name is Roberta Castro. I'm a pediatric intensivist and I live in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. A question that people always do to me is if children present delirium. Unfortunately, delirium in children is a sad reality. 25 to 50% of children in pediatric intensive care units or PICU present delirium. Delirium in children is associated with increased permanence in the intensive care unit and the hospital, increased mortality, increased PICU costs by 85%, and prolonged school absenteeism after hospital discharge. The evaluation of delirium in any patient should be seen as a quality parameter, and that is why many authors consider delirium as a sixth vital sign. Epidemiological data are still scarce, but it's known that without the use of a validated tool, delirium in children is underdiagnosed. For example, in a study I performed with my team here in 3PICO in Rio de Janeiro, uh, in a total of 504 admissions, the reported frequency of delirium based on the experience of pediatric intensivists was only 0.4%. Children with delirium can present disorientation, sleep disorders, night exacerbation, affective lability, mental confusion, difficulty concentration and responsiveness, irritability, and alteration of the level of consciousness. The most common differential diagnoses are pain, agitation, and withdrawal syndrome. In the hypoactive form, the child is apathetic with no interest in environment, and does not pay attention to the toys, for example. In the hyperactive form, the child has psychomotor agitation, is irritated with emotional and inconsolable ability, and in the mixed type, the child alternates between states of hypo and hyperactivity. According to Patel, Bell, and Traub, major risk factors predisposing to delirium in children include age less than two years old, developmental delay, high severity of illness, low albumin, use of mechanical ventilation, and the pre-existing medical condition. The precipitating risk factors encompass the use of benzodiazepines and anticholinergic drugs, cardiac surgery with bypass, the use of restraints, prolonged hospitalization, and immobilization. It's important to remember that in the picture, continuous sedation is usual in approximately 90% of infants and children in mechanical ventilation. The diagnosis is clinical and its greater realization has been possible thanks to the development of reliable and valid diagnostic tools. They are the Pediatric Confusion Assessment Method for the Intensive Care Unit, PCAM-ICU, the Preschool Confusion Assessment Method for the Intensive Care Unit or PSCAM ICU, the Pediatric Anesthesia Emergency Delirium, the Cornell Assessment of Pediatric Delirium, and the Sophia Observation Withdrawal Symptoms Pediatric Delirium Scale or SOSPD. The use of these two is recommended and depends on the choice and on the experience of the team. As an adult patient, prevention and treatment work together and consist of the use of non-pharmacological measures. Therefore, they are based on the identification and management of risk factors, mobilization, sleep promotion measures, and cognitive stimulation. Also, one of the pillars is the participation of the family. So in front of, of a child with a sudden change of behavior, always think it can be delirium. So thank you so much for your attention.